name is Holly. Welcome to the Murder She Shed. This is the place where we discuss true crime right from my she shed. The case we are discussing today does involve child abuse. So if this is something you are sensitive to, you should watch another video on my channel, Murder She Shed. Alright, but first before we start, have a heart and hit that like and subscribe because I don't want us to grow apart. And I know that you are truly smart. So now that you have listened to my horrible rhymes, let's start our story of true crimes. All right, guys, this is a sad, sad story of a nine-year-old Emmerich Osuna. That not only did he have an evil mother, but then he was given to an evil stepmother. This stepmother would cause extreme torture on Emmerich until eventually this would end his little life. Emmerich loved grilled cheese sandwiches. He loved putting things together and transformers and anything to do with ninjas. He was funny and loving with the personality that could light up a room he was in and a smile that you could fall in love with. Look at that smile. Emmerich was born to parents Cecile Lucero and Eric Osuna on October 16, 2010. Cecile, his biological mother, was arrested in 2017 for abusing her children. She was seven months pregnant when arrested, and she already had 15-month-old twins, a two-year-old, and Emmerich, who was seven at the time. So on January of 2022, Cecile would plead guilty, his biological mother, to one count of assault resulting in a comatose state of a child younger than eight and one count of child abuse and endangerment, both felonies and admitted sentencing enhancements for causing great bodily injury on a child younger than five. And she was given four years in prison for this. This case started when Cecile's daughter, the 15-month-old twin, was brought into a hospital unconscious on December 17, 2017. At first, she told police her daughter had fell in the bathroom. But later, she told police she slammed her daughter's head on the metal pole of a bed after her live-in boyfriend left for a Christmas party. Guess she was mad about him going to the Christmas party. She didn't just slam her daughter's head into this metal pole. She slammed it repeatedly into this metal pole until the daughter became unresponsive. Sad. She was mad at her boyfriend for the Christmas party, and she was also mad because she was pregnant again. I guess she didn't know how to fix that problem. After the child became unresponsive, she didn't even take the child to the hospital. Instead, she called a friend who came over and took her daughter. She didn't want to take her, so she just delayed. It took time for her friend to drive over to take her daughter who was dying to the hospital because she didn't want to face the consequences of what she had done. So immediately after hospital staff seeing this little girl, the shape she was in, they called authorities and authorities headed straight over to Cecile's house. And that's where they found the other children. The twin brother was found with a skull fracture and several fractured ribs. Cecilia's daughter struggled with a brain bleed and was in a coma for a while. She did live, though. Doctors also found she had a broken elbow that was healing. So it had been done a little while back. She also admitted to kicking and dropping her daughter. Cecile said she was envious when the twins' father doted on them instead of paying attention to her. Yeah, really. And she claimed her daughter would dog her with a look that she was unafraid of her mother. 
Just sounds like to me that she had some serious anger and jealousy issues. Can you imagine being jealous over your children? Emmerich was released into the custody of his aunt, but unfortunately would only stay there for a short while. Because then his dad, Eric, was given full-time custody. Even though he had really never had much to do with him. And they gave him custody on February of 2018. Such a bad decision to allow Emmerich to be around his evil stepmom, Monique Osuna. You will find out in a minute just how truly evil this woman was. It's mind blowing. He would only survive just under two years in this house of horrors. Emmerich died September 1st, 2020. No one called 911 when he initially became unresponsive. Friend Hannah Berry testified that Monique texted her at 5 p.m. saying that something was wrong with Emmerich. His parents did not even call 911. They called a friend to come over to look at him. Texts found later that were sent four hours before his death showed that they were afraid of getting in trouble. Eric, the dad, had texted, We need to call 911, and also text, I know you're scared. I am too. Proving their guilt right there. After the friend came over, she noticed Emmerich was in the floor, covered with a blanket, and when she touched his hand, it felt cold. This is your first clue of weirdness. When your child is sick, is it is that child laying in the floor? No, it, it it's he's up in his bed unless he chose to be in the floor. But he he's up in his bed and and you're comforting him like he's you're making him more comfortable. These people did not make their child, who they supposedly loved, more comfortable. He's laid in the floor with a blanket over him, and she said his hand was cold. And she suggested they try to give him Pedialyte from a syringe. An unresponsive child. That is stupid. For one, if you're unresponsive like that and you give liquids, then it could go into their lungs and not their stomach. And that's very dangerous. Please don't do that if someone's unresponsive. Sorry, I'm a nurse and sometimes that nursing just comes in me once in a while and I have to make a point. It is only after the nine-year-old stopped breathing that a call was made to 911. They made an attempt at CPR themselves and would later say they seen milky foam coming from his mouth while attempting CPR. Emergency responders who came to the apartment previously testified that Emmerich was lying on the floor and was visibly bruised caked with vomit, underweight, and clad, nine years old. He was clad only in a diaper. That's all he had on at nine years old. Although they were able to get his heart restarted, Emmerich died at St. Luke's Children's Hospital early the next morning. Fortunately, much of his abuse in the weeks before his death were actually caught on a nanny cam which allowed the jury to see the torture inflicted on this little boy. Good and bad, I suppose, that they had to see this, but it was good because they couldn't lie about all the things they had actually done to this boy. The nanny cam was actually suggested by the friend that they had called instead of calling 911. Monique had been complaining about Emmerich's behavior to her friend. Emmerich had been diagnosed with ADHD. I am very familiar with this since I happen to have ADHD as well. And I understand the problems that come with that are deep and wide sometimes. And so doctors had also thought that he had reactive attachment disorder as well. This is a rare but serious condition 
that may develop if the child's basic needs for comfort, affection, and nurturing aren't met, and loving, caring, stable attachments with others are not established. Well, we can totally see how that could have happened, considering his whole life. He had never been shown any love from mother or dad. Sad. The nanny cam had been put up a couple of weeks before his death. While Emmerich was laying there dying and before they called 911, this is crazy, before they called 911, they told their friend Heather to go hide the nanny cam in her car and take it home and hide it in her house. They didn't want any evidence at all to be shown. A couple of days after they were arrested, Heather did turn the nanny cam footage over to authorities. In the footage, it would show Emmerich had suffered terrific abuse before his death. The nine-year-old was forced to do physical exercises for hours in a row, including wall sits, jumping jacks, and other things. Usually, his stepmom will require him to do at least 12 hours of exercise daily, sometimes up to 20 hours a day. Okay, guys, I can't even stand exercise for one hour. I complain about the one hour, and a lot of times I don't do it, honestly, if you want to know the truth. But can you imagine being made to exercise from 12 to 20 hours a day? And you didn't have any energy because you wouldn't get much food. Can you imagine that? Due to the coronavirus pandemic, Monique was working from home and supposedly was homeschooling the children. I believe she had three other children besides Emmerich. But Emmerich was the only one that was tortured. They picked on him. One video showed Emmerich performing a wall sit while Monique stood over him, yelling profanities and threatening to beat the child. Another video depicted Emmerich doing a physical exercise in the kitchen before Eric, his dad, appeared to hit the child with a belt in the back of the head. Okay, this is a rough one. Another video showed Emmerich asleep on the floor of the living room without a pillow, or blanket, only to be awoken by Monique, who appeared to grab him by the hair, pull him off the ground, and force him into the kitchen. She then demanded that he start doing jumping jack. Can you imagine being in a sound sleep and someone coming and doing you like that? I mean, just being grabbed up by your hair and just jerked up, you would never be able to sleep Good, it seems like to me, if you always was suspecting something bad to happen like that. It's just terrible. And she did this because she was reportedly mad at him for drinking a glass of water meant for someone else. A glass of water, guys. When he asked to use the bathroom, Monique said he could not. She said, Next time, I'll put poison in a cup and put your name on it. Wow. During a 12-minute video played in the court, Emmerich was shown doing an exercise in the kitchen. He paused and moved towards the garbage can. And moments later, a woman said to be Monique was seen entering the room. I guess it was hard for him to see who it was. At which time... She kicked the child before hitting him in the head several times. Another video showed Emmerich being hit with a frying pan while standing on one leg with his hands above his head. Emmerich appears severely malnourished in the video clips, his ribs protruding through his body. She told police that she had hit Emmerich fewer than 10 times that day before he died. And it was with a dog leash because she could hit harder with it than a belt. Well, that amazed me that 
bragging because you hit a child under 10 times in one day as if it is a huge accomplishment. Thinking that is not very many times just shows the pure evil of this woman, although most abuse did occur by the stepmother. Eric stood by and let this happen, which to me may be more sickening than what the stepmother actually did. Your mom and dad is supposed to be a security blanket for you. And sadly, Emmerich had no one to fight for him. That is the saddest thing ever. One of the worst things that I have ever heard was that Emmerich had a rubber band wrapped tightly around the end of his penis, guys, as well as a diaper on at nine years old. Can you imagine the pain he must have been in from that rubber band constricting the blood in his penis? And also restricting the urine flow. That's crazy. It was also shown on the footage that she repeatedly would hit him in the head with a metal spoon. She can be heard calling him a effing loser in a piece of S-H-I-T as well as telling him that she was going to make him eat his own feces and drink his own urine. This lady's sick. In the video, not once does a member of the family show affection or positive attention to Emmerich. Not one time. Not once does he play with a toy or a game. When his siblings, father and stepmother, eat fast food for dinner, he gets none. He just sits on the floor and watches them. Usually he was only given rice and water if he was given anything at all. When they headed to the bedrooms for the night, he would curl up in the living room floor if he was lucky. No blanket, no pillow. If he wasn't so lucky, he would be forced to sleep in a closet with no blanket or no pillow. Shut in a closet. She would kick him in the crotch and would prop chairs up against the door so he couldn't escape. Emmerich died weighing only 44 pounds at nine years of age. With dark, large bruises from his inner thighs that went over his buttocks, groin, and lower back. He was also badly dehydrated and we know malnourished. Monique finally pled guilty to the charges on February of 2022, so just recently. Trial is set for June in exchange for her plea. Prosecutors will not seek the death penalty. Charges against the father are still pending. I know, it was a horrible case, wasn't it? If you suspect child abuse, please call this number. Report it, report it. Report it again and again till you get some something done about it. Even though these cases are hard to research and listen to, I believe these cases can teach us to watch for certain signs of abuse and hopefully for the victim, if it's brought into the light, then they will be quicker about making changes in the system. I hope. All right, guys, this was a hard one. But thanks for joining me in the Murder She Shed. And if you want to be notified of any new cases, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And you can join me right here in my She Shed. I'd love to have you. And I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe. Keep your children safe. And y'all, I love y'all. And I thank you for always being kind to me. You're such awesome subscribers. All right. 